This is a video recap for the Gates of Lador on the Green River in Dinosaur National Monument. Our flows on this were ranging between 2,000 and 2,200, although it did feel like there was a little bit more water than that, partly because the water was cloudy and so there was a lot of rain upstream. This first rapid is Winnie's Rapid, and it's got this big rock right in the middle. There's a pretty clear channel to the right side of it, but there are some guard rocks you have to wait to get around before you can move from left to right. So it is a little bit of a tricky class two, class three rapid. The next rapid is one of the, the classics on this section. Now, there is a pretty good scout on the left. This is Upper Disaster Falls. Uh, there's a handful of boulders and really you wanna just try to line up between them, find the tongue and drop straight over. Uh, it's not too tricky, it's not too challenging. If you're familiar with it, I wouldn't say you need to scout it. If you're brand new to it, it might be worth a look. This is actually a rapid where um, when Powell's expedition came down, they lost one of their boats. And this was really early in their expedition down the entire drainage of the Colorado River system, starting in Green River, Wyoming. And so because it was so early and they completely lost one of their boats um, in this section, they got the name Disaster Falls. There are a few different sections of Disaster Falls. There's the main falls that we just saw. And then down below, there is um, a couple more sections of rapids and lower disaster. And the big thing with this is just to stay away from the right-hand wall. There's a pretty big undercut on that right-hand wall. Other than that, it's just rock dodging and lining up for different holes. You can see the undercuts straight in front of us. Um, if you are over there, they can pin a boat, so you want to stay away from them. Other than that, the lower part of Disaster Falls is pretty straightforward. Just avoid the boulders and line up for the waves. Park Falls is the next noteworthy rapid. Um, it's got some, some boulders and pour overs to avoid, but largely you can kind of line up and run down the middle. And this lets you know that Triplet Falls is coming up. Shortly around the bend, um, after Harp Falls, you do come to Triplet, which is one of and the three noteworthy rapids. There is a opportunity to scout it from the Triplet camp. It is a long walk down to it because um, Triplet is a long rapid. The intro to the rapid is just a lot of kind of line choosing and rock dodging. You're looking out for pour overs, you're looking out for holes, and just kind of trying to pick the best line, avoiding any boulders as you make your way down. The river bends to the right, and then it will bend back over to the left. And there are a lot of undercuts on that far right wall. So again, you want to be aware of that and just keep away from the wall. The final move at Triplet is one of the more technical moves on the river. There are large boulders on river right, and you have to move from the right to the left, avoiding the, the right side channel, which leads you into the birth canal. So I'm choosing to do a downstream ferry after I pass those rocks. And I actually got over a little earlier than I really needed to, so I kind of had to pause and wait. And then you got to make your way back over from the right side to the left side, staying out of the birth canal. And if you know it's coming, it's an easy move to make, it's an easy move to miss. And the part that actually catches more people are the rocks just below 
are kind of straight in front of me right now, and there's a set of boulders over there that can that can perch a raft pretty easily. And we have one of our cataracts kind of get perched up on that for a little bit. So after you make that move past the birth canal, you want to get set to pull back to the right and avoid those. The third noteworthy rapid is Hell's Half Mile. It is the class four. And this also starts with a strong left to right move. There's a marker rock you want to sneak just inside of so that you can get to the right side of these rocks. And then there's a large pour over coming up over a boulder known as Lucifer, which has been known to pin boats. And then you want to make sure you're either getting right or left. You've got to choose a direction and go with it to get around the rock known as Huggy Bear. And there's Huggy Bear. Sorry for my camera angle. The, the box that kind of keeps the camera in line slid out of the way. This is Echo Park. It's a beautiful location where the Yampa River comes down and joins. There is an opportunity to reload water in Echo Park, and this sort of opens up the lower end of the canyon known as Whirlpool Canyon. Down below Whirlpool is Split Mountain. Um, this is Moonshine Rapid. At a lower water level like this, it's really nothing too concerning. Um, it's just some waves and rock dodging. At higher levels, you do need to be aware of some, some possible holes, um, and then after that it's just a pretty fun wave train. Where the upper portion of the river felt a little bit higher than normal, because of the, the rains they'd had previously. Um, the, the lower section, because it's late in the season and the Yampa is not bringing in as much water, did feel a little bit on, on the low side. So a little low, a little bit um, technical. This rapid is SOB. And same thing, you've got a lot of rocks and boulders to dodge. There is a pretty, there's a decently clean line down the right hand side. Uh, I wasn't set up very well for it at the top, so it became sort of a, a game of rock dodging for me down through the middle here. I was the lead boat, so I was trying to do what I could to signal to the other boats. Um, where I saw an easier line from below the rapid, I'm trying to tell them, hey, go over left, or hey, go down the center. Um, cause it, was, it was a little bit technical, and there were quite a few boulders to kind of miss in these lower sections on Moonshine, SOB, and School Board. This section is permitted by the National Park Service. There are four launches per day, and if you can get onto the river, it's a really, really wonderful trip. Um, you can do three nights, four days. Uh, sometimes you can apply for a layover day, if the park service will allow it, but it's a really wonderful length trip. This is Schoolboy Rapid. It's just a fun wave train. Um, there is a wall that the current runs into at the end of the rapid, but it's pretty easy to, to make the move from left to right to avoid that wall. The lower portions of the gates of Lador, or the lower portions of the Yampa after the confluence are really pretty straightforward when it comes to the white water. However, you can get stuck with some pretty flat water with up canyon winds. That can lead to a long day of rowing. Especially in the later months where you have less water coming in from the Yampa. Final rapid for the Gates of Lador, or for Split Mountain if you're doing the day trip or if you're doing the Yampa. The last rapid is Inglesby. There is a large boulder right in the middle of the river. Uh, it does run to both sides. The left side is a little bit bigger and at higher water, 
it's a much easier move to make. At this water level, it's kind of equivalent because there's a couple more, more boulders that are hidden um, that you don't really see until you're on top of them. Uh, but you can run to the right side or the left side of the large boulder in the middle. So it's kind of a choose your own adventure rapid. The Gates of Lador is a really wonderful trip. It's three nights, four days, it's really fun white water. In general, it's pretty forgiving. And if you have a chance, an opportunity to, to run the trip, I'd highly recommend it. It's a beautiful, beautiful area and one of the prettiest canyons that I've been in.